Today, I'm going to take you on a journey through space and time, exploring some of the most fascinating and mysterious phenomena in the universe. Roy Kerr, a brilliant mathematician from New Zealand. In 1963, he made a groundbreaking discovery by finding the first exact solution to Einstein's general relativity field equations for a rotating black hole. Why is this such a big deal, you might ask? Well, Einstein's equations are notoriously complex, and finding solutions that apply to the real world is incredibly challenging. Many had tried and failed. Kerr's solution was groundbreaking because it accurately modeled a realistic rotating black hole, something that had never been done before. For the first time, we had a way to describe these cosmic giants that wasn't just theoretical, but applicable to the universe we live in. Fast forward to 2023, and Kerr's work remains a cornerstone in astrophysics. Kerr also proposed that black holes do not have singularities, those points of infinite density at their centers. This was a radical departure from the accepted theories of the time. Instead, he suggested a new model that could change our understanding of the universe. This idea was bold and controversial. It went against the established theories of physics legends like Stephen Hawking and Roger Penrose, who had built their careers on the concept of singularities. Let's rewind the clock to understand the foundation on which his discoveries were built. Our journey takes us back to the early 20th century, to a time when Albert Einstein was revolutionizing physics with his theory of general relativity. In 1915, Einstein completed what would become humanity's best gravitational theory. Just months after Einstein published his theory, Karl Schwarzschild, while fighting on the Russian front during World War I, found the first exact solution to Einstein's field equations. Using a perfectly spherical, non-rotating, massive body, along with a static spacetime, Schwarzschild described how spacetime warped around such an object. One of the key outcomes of Schwarzschild's work is the concept of the Schwarzschild radius, which defines the event horizon of a black hole. If enough mass is condensed into a sufficiently small area, space-time will warp to such an extent that not even light can escape. For example, if the sun were compressed into a single point, it would have a Schwarzschild radius of just three kilometers. Inside this radius, escape becomes impossible, as it would require traveling faster than the speed of light. In 1965, just two years after Roy Kerr revolutionized our comprehension of rotating black holes, a new figure emerged on the scene, British physicist and mathematician Roger Penrose. Penrose published a seminal paper titled Gravitational Collapse and Space-Time Singularities. In this groundbreaking work, he demonstrated that singularities, those mysterious points at the center of black holes where densities become infinite, must exist. His geometric approach showed that trapped surfaces within a black hole inevitably lead to light rays, being confined to a finite path essentially sealing their fate within the collapsing space-time. But the story doesn't end there. Enter Stephen Hawking, one of the most iconic figures in theoretical physics. In 1972, Hawking expanded on Penrose's ideas with his own paper, Black Holes in General Relativity. He echoed Penrose's assertion that the existence of a closed, trapped surface implies the occurrence of a singularity. Hawking's work, combined with Penrose's, laid the foundation for what we now know as the Penrose-Hawking singularity theorems. Infinity pops up frequently in math, but physicists struggle with it. Infinity doesn't describe the real world, so physicists need to find clever methods of getting rid of it. For example, in quantum field theory, physicists regularly divide or subtract infinities of the same order to cancel them out. Though infinities appear as a natural consequence of the mathematics that describes the universe, physicists find it difficult to actually use them, as they don't match observations. So when infinities are used in physical descriptions of the universe, this should be a red flag. Roy Kerr himself pointed this out in his criticism of black hole singularities. The problem is that there is an infinity of possible solutions, but their Einstein tensors do not necessarily satisfy appropriate physical conditions. So, yes it works on paper, but it does not match reality. In 2023, Kerr published a thought-provoking paper titled, Do Black Holes Have Singularities? In this work, he takes direct aim at the foundational assumptions made by Penrose and Hawking. He criticized their assumption that space-time geometry inside an event horizon inevitably results in a singularity. 
Rather, he proposed that a singularity is only one of many possible solutions. It has not been proved that a singularity, not just a fall, is inevitable when an event horizon forms around a collapsing star. Fall is short form for finite, affine, length, light, refers to the idea that light rays within an event horizon are not infinite and must terminate. Kerr further claimed that rotating black holes might create layers. Outside the event horizon, the rotation contorts space-time through frame-dragging, creating the outer ergosphere, a dynamic region in which the laws of physics behave strangely. Below the ergosphere is the outer horizon, which corresponds to the event horizon or Schwarzschild radius. Inside the event horizon are the inner horizon, outer ergosphere, and the ring singularity. Light rays, therefore, can exist in one or more of these layers, meaning they do not necessarily terminate. Kerr asserted, the singularity believers need to show why it is true, not just quote the Penrose assumption. In 1974, Stephen Hawking made a startling prediction. He proposed that black holes aren't entirely black. Instead, they can emit radiation due to quantum effects occurring near their event horizons. This phenomenon, now known as Hawking radiation, arises from the interplay between quantum mechanics and general relativity. At the edge of a black hole, where gravitational forces are immensely strong, virtual particle pairs constantly pop in and out of existence. Normally, these particle pairs annihilate each other almost immediately. However, at the event horizon, one particle can fall into the black hole, while the other escapes into space as radiation. Hawking's theory suggests that this radiation causes black holes to lose mass and energy over time, eventually leading them to evaporate completely. In the decades since its introduction, Hawking radiation has spurred countless debates, research and even experimental attempts to detect it. While direct observational evidence remains elusive, the theoretical framework continues to inspire and challenge physicists around the world. In traditional models, black holes are characterized by point singularities, where density and gravity become infinite. These infinities pose significant challenges for physicists trying to reconcile general relativity with quantum mechanics. General relativity beautifully describes gravity on a cosmic scale, while quantum mechanics governs the other three fundamental forces, the weak force, the strong nuclear force, and the electromagnetic force on subatomic scales. However, these two pillars of modern physics often clash, especially in the extreme environments of black holes. But what if Kerr's revolutionary ideas about black holes are correct? What if black holes don't have point singularities? Kerr's model suggests that these singularities might be more complex, involving multiple layers of space-time and eliminating the problematic infinities that have long plagued theoretical physics. Without these point-like singularities, uniting general relativity and quantum mechanics might become more attainable. A unified theory could unlock new understanding of the universe, from the smallest particles to the largest cosmic structures. It could revolutionize technology, energy, and even our understanding of existence.